rebirth. And no man dieth to himself. Romans 14 verses 7 and 8 For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. King James Version The Logos is logic and language intertwined irreversibly and inexplicably. For only God knows all the reasons. The Logos is a cosmic structure of unending beauty and bewilderment. There is a world of resolution beyond our vision. It is the mystery that we all seek. The hidden captivates us. Clarity cures our blindness. It is the Bible that both grounds us and elevates us in the quest for understanding. For there is nothing that does not matter. Painful realities are undeniable. The suffering of Christ on the cross is a symbol of what always was to come. The moral human impulse is to eliminate pain, but suffering is what ties us to eternity. Caution in life's actions is warranted as joy is easily destroyed, as is faith and hope. Yet, we must know that to dispel something, you have to be stronger or tougher than that thing. And Christ overcame death to bring life. Virtues allow you to slowly navigate existence, and morality is hope. To stand with nobility, one must move forward with an example of what is right. The light must guide us, as did the Exodus. Belief must be held for what you grip is a result of your belief. Even thoughts can be held. What you do is in order of the importance of possibilities. Preparation is outside of perception. And duties to God come first. Dexterity exists beyond the wisdom of your tools and the reasoning of your words. Objectivity is different from reality. What is there is what is there for you alone. The cube or the ball may both appear flat. But what we see or perceive are patterns more than objects. Do you see what is there? Or what could be? Do you allow yourself to be limited or limitless? Lift up your eyes to the horizon that dominates possibility. The mind consistently circumnavigates opportunity. Don't miss the boat. It was God who first encountered the problem of dissecting time and space into the finite and the infinite, so that man may have opportunity. It was man in the shadow of God's wisdom 
and following his words that learned what should be done next. For with God are possible many things that are not possible with man. Accurate reflections are essential for actions to be viable. Understanding is the root of usefulness. Familiarity may breed some kind of comfort and contempt. After a time, things change just so that they may remain the same. Progress outside of individual understanding is just illusory. Yet still, the future for all people is indeterminate, an unscripted act for the actor to play through. You have free will. Use it well, for time will tell. Humans exist to reflect reality in as useful a mode as possible. This is done by learning how to follow God's words and by listening and by discerning and remembering that all discernment comes from God. Humans communicate constantly. Response without contemplation and conversation is usually incomplete. Ideas exchanged of the imagination are in part magic and transformational. Similar things are not the same thing. The object and the possibilities of the object are also not the same. God has granted us an infinite play space. We have to prioritize our ideas because you can only do or see one thing at a time. You look at either what is interesting or what is dangerous, and this is the base of learning. Eyes are hands as much as hands are eyes. You can feel with both. Through this understanding, each person lays out their own hierarchy of value in their choices. A good person is a godly mediator between possibility and actuality. He knows the poverty of power over time. Happiness is in part enthusiasm and in part joy at the attainment of a goal. Delusion is the loss of understanding your personal goals. Priority is a hierarchy of values, a moral structure, not an ethical one. Reality is a cultural habitation. A story is a perception of a hierarchical narrative that relates to our choices and decisions. Truth is a ritual model for emulation. Heaven is unattainable on earth, but still a worthy goal. Fiction is an exploration of ethics and perceptions. Laws are carved into stone, and words themselves cut like knives and leave permanent scars. Anxiety is a signal. Consciousness is a narrow channel. And Christ is the only release. The drama is a description of ethical perceptions. The drama is real. The script is a direction. When you don't know where you are, then you don't know where you are going. A scientist 
is a man looking through the lens of a narrative, reading things backwards, wondering why, looking for answers. But man understands himself only through wrestling with a divine God. If we are to be sons of God and not devils, then we must know that we are creations and not creatures. That deep subconscious spirit which is the foundation of everything is God. The spirit is something embodied in the greatest of ideas. True art is a gesture of beauty that orientates you towards God, and it draws you to him as it pulls him to you. God extracts order from potential. Order must be habitable to man. It is ordained. Love And truth is the highest order and an abstract idea which is then given pattern through spirit. Godly in principle is perfect in nature. God is the inescapable consequence. God is an unselfconscious experience. God is the spirit that calls the wise to prepare. And God, through his Son, reminds us that only the highest possible sacrifice will reach the highest possible goal. Order unites the world. Disorder tears down societies. Without order, we are ununited and disorientated and destabilized. There is just imbalance. But each person has a cosmic role to play. We must consent to the judgment of God to know that we are within the eternal picture, for we are all children limited by our own infantile inability. But God is growth, and God is courage, and God is strength. Most of all, God is good, just in his righteousness and his punishments. His passion is the complete embrace of life's loves and catastrophes. It is our deliverance, for happiness is the other side of tragedy. They inhabit the same space, just as every coin has two sides. In order to live fully, you have to confront life fully. You must awaken and arise. You have to face the constant idea of tragedy. For death and the value therein is understanding the preciousness and fragility of life. Look around and see how the past of society and man's selfish endeavours remain a very convincing hell. If you are unwilling to face your dark side, then you will never be able to control it, and it will possess you. It will eventually devour you sooner than you realise. In the end, or perhaps before the end, life is to be lived. Roads less travelled are to be more explored. Adventure itself is the moral venture. For God is watching, not to see what we have done, but to know who we shall become. The time is always now. 
Let us pray. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Amen.